Guys, I don't know how to pronounce some of these names, so if I say them wrong, I'm sorry. Please yell at me in the comments. Hey everyone! Sorry for going radio silent for a bit. I know a lot of really cool updates came out and or are going to come out soon, but um... I took too long to cover it because I had family over, so now it's pretty much just common knowledge and there'd be no point, so too bad you don't get a video on that. Long story short, I have a lot of videos planned, but stuff keeps coming up that pushes all those back, so yeah, before I can let anything else get in my way, let's just go ahead and talk about Bunga Shit Dogs Part 2 and my predictions for what that might bring. I do want to give a quick warning for this one, though there will be Bunga Shit Dogs spoilers. Most have to do with abilities or like minor plot beats. There's a couple of like manga specific jokes, but if you don't know anything about the anime or manga and intend to watch or read it, maybe skip out on this one if you're a person who doesn't like even minor spoilers. But with that said, this one's going to be a little more in depth than my other ones to cover some bases that I didn't before. So let's start out with the elephant in the room, Rompo's board. Credit to Panic is my name underscore on Reddit for this nice graphic, by the way. Thank you. So I didn't have to make it myself. So with this board, I've seen a lot of people freaking out about it as if it's some implication of who we will get in part two of the crossover. But honestly, and maybe this is a hot take that might upset some people, but I think that's just kind of bogus. Like, I, I just don't believe that. Personally, I think this is really just an Easter egg with no relation to the second part or who we will be getting in it. If anything, actually, I see it as a reference to this one scene in the opening of the anime where all five of those characters are lined up. And before anyone tells me that Gin and Tachihara are technically in that scene as well, that's a completely valid point, but you can still pause the frame exactly on those five, so I still think it counts as a reference. Not to mention, otherwise, these characters, with the exception of the first two, of course, Akutagawa and Juya, are not really major characters, which is fine, but honestly, unless some of the better choices wrote real life content that would be deemed unfitting to include in an Identity 5, I can think of multiple much better options than some of these characters. Like really, Kaiji? Who watched or read Bungo Shea Dogs and thought that Kaiji would be the perfect fan favorite character to include? I mean, sure, he's fitting for Mike, but if you're gonna look at Koyo and Michiko next to each other and tell me that they couldn't think of a more prominent fan favorite that would fit nicely for an Identity 5 character's aesthetics and skills, it just doesn't make sense to me. But even still, you know, there's always a chance that I'm wrong. I certainly have been in the past with these things, and maybe these five really are who we'll be getting. In that case, I'm going to start with them, and afterwards I'll showcase some of the characters that I think are more fitting for this crossover. In either case, I do fully believe that we will at least be getting these first two, lest they wrote something I'm unaware of that gets them cut, but they're major characters and fan favorites, so I definitely see them being included. First and foremost, there's Akutagawa, and honestly, he's a pretty tricky case. I've seen a lot of people hopeful that he'll be a hunter, but honestly, no matter how you slice it, that's painfully unlikely. I think this will be a predominantly survivor-sided crossover, and especially now that both Atsushi and Dazai are survivors, I think it's safe to say that at least Akutagawa and Chuya will follow suit. As for who he'll play, honestly, I'm pretty unsure myself. In past videos, I've assigned him Embalmer for some reason, but admittedly, that's not a remarkably strong choice, and I picked it solely based on aesthetics. For some reason, I could see his coffin having a cool effect similar to Rashomon's armor, but a lot of people have had other thoughts, some that I like more than my own, so I want to showcase those options as well. Right now, some of the other strong picks I've seen are Cowboy and Patient. Both have something, a lasso and hooks respectively, that could easily take the form of Rashomon. However, I do want to note that due to Patient's heavy ties with psychologists and the fact that to my knowledge they've never had skins separate from each other, I'm not sure if Nettie's ever intended to separate them, which may take Patient off the table as an option. Since neither of them have had a crossover skin before, to my knowledge, there's not really any way or otherwise any indication of knowing until it does or doesn't happen. In this case, I personally believe that Cowboy is the most likely candidate for Akutagawa. Aesthetically, it's a big leap, but I think they can pull it off. As for Chuya, my pick is a little more cut and dry. Since day one, I've been very adamant that he would be perfect for Prospector, given that though their abilities are not quite exact, they match well enough to be the best pick out of everyone in Identity 5. While I did later realize that Acrobat may also work, I still think Prospector is the much stronger pick, especially if they want to mess around with his effects and maybe add some corruption as the alternative form like they did for Hajime in the past. 
or even like Dazai's, you know, switch between having his coat on and off if he's going to be an S tier, which I assume he will. In either case, if we're going with the board lineup as the official cast for part two, Acrobat has a much more fitting role elsewhere, really only leaving Prospector for Chuya. Now, it's very likely that both Akutagawa and Chuya will be S tiers, just like Atsushi and Dazai, with one in the shop and the other in the essence, though at this time I cannot say which would be which. If we're following the trend we have already set up, Akutagawa will be Essence and Trio will be Shop, but it is very possible that they flip that. So I I could not say, but I do believe both of them will be S tiers and follow suit with Atsushi and Dazai. Moving on, we do have Kaiji. Now again, I stand my ground that I really don't see him being a character they would include in this crossover, unless again, more fitting cast members are banned due to their real life counterparts. But acting as if this is official, it's pretty fair to say that he would be Acrobat. His ability literally has to do with bombs, so it's not hard to pick a fitting character for him. And honestly, if he does end up getting into this game, congrats for our whole four Kaiji fans, a real win for you guys. If I get him, I will definitely use that skin a lot. I think it's really funny. Next is Higuchi, one of my personal favorite characters, and one of the ones I actually do think will end up in this crossover. Though she is a bit more of a minor character as well, she's certainly more prominent than Kaiji or Hirotsu, at least presently slash earlier in the story, and she's very much fitting for Coordinator. Since her entire thing is sort of using guns, I really don't see her as anyone else, but I've been saying for a while now that she's one of the characters I'd absolutely adore to get in this crossover, so I will be very, very happy if she is indeed included. Bracing on by the fifth and final character on this board is Hirotsu, and honestly, I have no idea who he'd be. <laughs> A lot of people I've seen have said he would be good as Alva, but personally I don't see it. At least not visually. Ability-wise it sort of works, but Hermit is much too tall and it would just look very out of place in my opinion. If anything, I actually think he'd be even more fitting for Prospector than Chuya, as his ability is basically just a brute force repulsion. But saying that, I really don't think they'd pick him over Chuya for anything, considering like Kaiji, he's really not that popular of a character. In fact, out of the three Black Lizard characters, the other two, Gin and Tachihara, they're probably more fan favorites than he is. Granted, I have no idea if they wrote anything that would get them excluded, but things like this are the reason that I really don't see this board being anything accurate as, you know, a serious indication of the cast of part two. So you might be asking, what's my version of it then, if not the board, okay? Well, here's what I imagine we'll be getting. Keep Akutagawa, Chuya, and Higuchi. Akutagawa and Chuya are the S tiers, one in shop and one in essence. Higuchi is an essence A tier. Now, two more A tier essence spots to fill. Who do we fill them with, if not Kaiji and Hirotsu? Well, Kyoka and Koyu. Kyoka, though technically no longer in the Port Mafia, was in it at the beginning of the series, so honestly it makes more sense to put her in an essence with the rest of the Mafia. Not even mentioning that she couldn't have been in the agency essence, as it was initially, keyword initially, planned to be full. Though I've seen some back and forth on who she should be, some say little girl, some say geisha, and some say mechanic, to me the only option is mechanic. The other two just have some fatal flaws that kill it for me. Little girl is too small and young, and geisha is too old and tall for a literal 14 year old girl. I mean, plus geisha fits so much better as our next pick. But that aside, mechanic fits very well for Kyoka, on not only an aesthetic level, but a fundamental one too. Kyoka controls her ability Demon Snow, in this case it would be the bot, through a phone. This is very easy to reskin a remote controller into a phone. Give her some accessory to maybe make the bot look a little more like Demon Snow, and boom, the mechanic's perfect for Kyoka. Secondly, there's Koyo, an executive of the Mafia who is not only a more important of a character in most cases, but I'd wager is also much more popular than Kaiji or Hirotsu. Her ability, Golden Demon, is very similar to Demon Snow, and I mean, even just looking at the two of them side by side, it's not hard to figure out why I think that she and Geisha are a match made in heaven. Have her Parajna form become her ability and boom, perfect. That's how I'd personally do it, at least. But I do want to shine light on a third alternative. This one isn't my favorite, unless Higuchi is moved to be some sort of event quest gift, since I think our inclusion is nice. But another option is to keep Akutagawa and Chia as the S tiers, and have the three A tiers be the three main members of the Black Lizard, Gin, Tachihara, and Hirotsu. Since they are a trinity in the series, it sort of makes sense if they do take this route. The only issue is, I really don't know who would be fitting for all of them. Again, Hirotsu is tricky, 
And small spoiler warning for Gein ahead, but it might also be troublesome to pick a character for Gein due to them wanting to, you know, match genders, but also not wanting to spoil anything. And honestly, I just can't think of any character for Tachihara either. Vague manga spoilers, but maybe Prospector? But not everyone can be Prospector! There's also another character joke to be made too, but I don't want to be that guy who spoils too much. That aside, I really have no idea what to expect. I'm hopeful we'll at least get a full cast this time, and considering the fallout of part one, I'm sure netties will be a lot more careful about who they pick, which, you know, may limit logical choices, making predictions a little difficult without deep diving into the writings of all of the real life authors. That said, eh, these are my picks. Unless you expect us to get Mori or something, but honestly, netties does not need more backlash, so I think they know better. Elisa's little girl would still be cute though, but we probably aren't getting that, so... Uh. Yeah, those are my predictions. Let me know if you agree or disagree, or what you think about the board, if it's accurate, or if it's a false lead, or what. Oh, and uh, good luck to everyone pulling on this crossover when it comes out. I know it's a ways away. I believe I read somewhere that it'll be in February, but that might not be accurate, so um, maybe don't trust me. Hey, but here's, here's to hoping I'm right about something for once. And uh, thank you guys who always tune into my predictions. It does mean a lot to me. So, um... Yeah, if you like my content, even if you just come watch the predictions, maybe try and watch another one, because I'm, I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers, because, um, I, um, yeah, there's no way to sugarcoat it, I just want ad revenue. <laughs> so if you want to subscribe to me and help me out with that, that would mean a lot. Or you can go watch another one, or comment, or like, or uh, trick the algorithm, make them, make them think that I'm more talented than I am. <laughs> Yeah, um, see you in the next one, though. I don't know when I'll get to it, but I'm gonna please, uh, uh, uh <laughs> yeah, see you in the next one. Uh, I don't know when I'm gonna get to it, but I'm gonna be playing the sculptor soon, so that'll be fun. Uh, see you guys on that one. Yeah, uh, hope I'm, hope, uh, mm, hope I'm right for once. <laughs> Alright, bye.